Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and uh, let me add my words of welcome, uh, three true friends of the subcommittee. Uh, and I know I've worked with each of you all and developed what I would describe as a trusted working relationship and indeed a friendship, and I'm grateful for that. And I know the subcommittee is grateful for uh, the work that you do, the dedication for the future of our Navy. Uh, and I want to say a, just a personal word of thanks for visiting Northeast Florida, both of you, Admiral Grenert uh, and Secretary Mabus. I know you were in Northeast Florida, Southeast Georgia uh, over the last couple of weeks, and you know how Navy friendly those communities are. And I want you to know it's a big deal when you all take the time to not only visit the men and women in uniform, but the communities that support them. Uh, and that gives them a sense of uh, where your commitment is to the future of the Navy. Uh, one of the things I, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about, we've, we've worked on uh, aircraft, we've worked on ships, we've worked on submarines. Uh, but I must say when I saw the uh, proposed budget, it raised some questions about some of the programs that, that we worked on, uh, like the, the P-8 Poseidon program uh, where eight aircraft are being dropped. Uh, the E-2D Hawkeye, uh, Advanced Hawkeye, one of those is being dropped. Um, when you look at uh, who, how we're going to replace the Ohio-class submarines, uh, what are we going to do about pre-positioning ships that the Marines have? Uh, what about the amphibs? Uh, questions about that, but uh, our chairman runs a pretty tight ship, so we don't have time to talk about all of that. Uh, but I would like to, to continue that conversation as we develop the, the uh, subcommittee's uh, final work. But I would like to, to talk about just the heart and soul of the Navy, and that's, that's ships. Um, and the first question comes, uh, Secretary Mavis, when you sent up the budget, uh, you also sent up a, a new way to count ships. Uh, and for the first time that I know of, you're going to count ships that haven't been counted as part of the count. And I know the Navy always has a problem making sure that we keep our ship count up because numbers matter. We talk about that. And so when you count ships you haven't counted before, then you get to increase the size of the fleet without going out and buying a new ship. Uh, and I guess at a time when there's a talk about decommissioning an aircraft carrier, there's talk about laying up cruisers, uh, uh, skeptical people might say, is this just a coincidence that you decided you were going to count ships that you didn't count before, uh, while maybe that takes some of the attention away from some of the other things that are going on. So I guess my first question just just common sense, what, what, what drove you, what goes behind that decision to decide to count ships like, I guess, a hospital ship uh, that hadn't been counted as part of that battle group or battle force? What went into that thinking? Well, first, Congressman Crenshaw, we talked about this last year, and the Navy always takes a look at how we do, how we do our ship counts, and we've changed it several times over the, over the past uh, decade or so. Um, the, the short answer to why we made this change was it was the ships that were requested by combat commanders. So ships that were requested to be forward deployed. And we've also taken some ships out um, in this count. Um, and, and two examples are we've taken mine countermeasure ships that are not forward deployed out of the count. Um, we've put uh, patrol craft that are forward deployed that have been up armored and up gunned and are now on patrol in uh, particularly the Arabian Gulf um, onto this because this is requested by the by the combat commander um, and one of the things I told this committee uh, last year was that if we did this we were going to be completely transparent so when you get the 30-year shipbuilding plan you're going to get the old counting rules and the new counting rules and when I say we're going to get the fleet to 300 ships, I'm using the old counting rules. Okay. Um, well, let me just, like, for instance, I, I want to ask you about the cruisers, uh, because there's, a, there's also in the budget a proposal to, to, I guess, lay up, I don't know exactly what that means, but lay up 11 cruisers. And I guess, I guess they'll still be counted. Uh, but, but here's the question. Uh, for the last two years, the Navy said, uh, we're going to decommission seven cruisers. Uh, and this subcommittee, uh, trying to be cost efficient, have said common sense will tell you if you if you got some ships that have useful life remaining, 
then maybe rather than decommission them, it might be wise to modernize them, uh, upgrade them, uh, and then they'd stay in the fleet. And as you know, we, we, we put that in our appropriation bill uh, and said, do that. Uh, and this year, it was kind of a surprise when we say you should modernize them, then we, I guess this year, at least you didn't say we're going to decommission them, but you did say we're going to take 11 cruisers uh, and put them in what's called, I guess, a layup uh, and kind of a phased modernization. As I understand it, that, that the average time would be nine years. Some would be modernized in five years, some would be modernized in 12 years, but if you're going to phase in this modernization, it seems like uh, that's a long time to have these cruisers uh, out of service. I, I assume they're tied up somewhere that, with no crew and the weapon systems, et cetera. So uh, I guess my question is, 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 is that, you think, the best use of uh, the money that we appropriated? Uh, and I guess what assurance does this subcommittee have that, that it's almost like one foot in the grave. You say, we're not, at least we didn't say we're going to decommission them, but you did say we're going to phase in uh, the modernization that might take on average nine years. So it, 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 my concern, I think the concern of the subcommittee might be that it, is this kind of a, a, a way to, to phase in the, the decommissioning as opposed to actually modernize them, upgrade them? Yeah, we, we need some answers here. Uh, this is a focal point, and, and uh, maybe Mr. Crenshaw won't, might not have any more time, but before we leave here, we need to know how we're going to have this forward presence with a lot of uh, ghost ships that uh, are, are part of that count. Well, first, um, the, the short answer to your last question is no. It's not a, a way to try to decommission. Second. We're profoundly grateful to this committee and to Congress for uh, giving us the funds to modernize these cruisers. Um, <clears throat> when we looked at the cruisers that we needed, we need 11 operational at any one time. The most effective way to keep 11 in the fleet, because if we, if we simply modernized all the ships today, the, all those cruisers would leave the fleet, all 22 of them would leave the fleet in the late 2020s. By doing this phase modernization, we'll keep those cruisers in the fleet into the 2040s. The, and, and we're not laying them up. We are modernizing them. And I know that there's a, um, that the concern is that this is, just a way for us to decommission them. That will, this is the first step down that road. We'll work with this committee in any way you want us to, to reassure you that that is not the case. In fact, our plan is to buy all the materials to do the whole mechanical and electrical modernization for, for these cruisers uh, up front uh, so that uh, the, the ships begin to be modernized. Second, we're not um, taking them out from under the control of the Chief of Naval Operations. Unlike a ship which is laid up, which goes under the control of the shipyard, uh, CNO has, has command of these ships and can bring them back in if, um, if there's a national emergency that requires that. Third, the reason that we are phasing it the way we are doing it is as the cruisers that remain um, forward deployed operational retire at, as they reach the end of their lives. The, the ones we're modernizing have the most life left in them. As the ones that uh, reach the end of their lives, we're doing a one for one. As one retires, one comes out of modernization so that we keep the same number. Um, uh, we